The Legend of Kiryu Kazuma has been woven across the Yakuza series through a combination of extreme violence, strong friendships, and many, many renditions of Bakamitai. In many ways, Kiryu, or rather, the Dragon of Dojima, is a legendary figure that makes for a really fun protagonist. Slayer of Fugs, Paragon of Goodness, Daddy, Kiryu Kazuma, the main protagonist of the Yakuza series, is a character of many simple but well-defined traits. I think most fans will agree with me that there is very little in terms of grey area when it comes to Kiryu, especially compared to more morally ambiguous characters, such as series rival ally and fanatic stalker Majima. Inherently, Kiryu as a character isn't particularly complex to understand. He is a good guy, he is a hero, and he tends to solve most of his problems with two fists and little forward thinking. I love Kiryu for this. That being said, Kiryu is still an incredibly interesting protagonist. His motivations and beliefs are well defined throughout the Yakuza series. His relationship with other characters feels genuine, and he is just so incredibly likeable. In many ways, Kiryu truly embodies the status of a legendary hero, and we are going to take a further look at this in today's video. Welcome to the gaming conversation as we take a look at the iconic badass that we all love as we explore some of the nuances to his character. We make regular gaming critiques, reviews and discussion videos, so if you enjoy the video today, a subscription is greatly appreciated. Okay, let's first get this lovely old chestnut out of the way. No matter how meme worthy it may be, the fact is, in canon, Kiliu has never killed anyone. Yes, for a guy who is always ready to throw down, for a man with such awesome strength and a concerningly creative mind for delivering various forms of punishment, Kiliu is not a killer. This is a really important statement, and Kiliu's unwillingness to cross the line is one of the most important traits of his character. Cutscene Kiryu, as I shall now so lovingly refer to him as, is pretty much the closest thing to a superhero that we will get in the Yakuza series. His grey and maroon suit is just as iconic to Yakuza as the blue and red is to Superman. He is always ready to help out anyone who is affected by injustice. The man is basically immortal, having been subjected to various forms of torture and not to mention all the mental suffering he has faced at the loss of many loved ones. Kiryu is a character whose life is regularly subject to tragedy, and yet he somehow always manages to make it through, seemingly stronger than ever before. Kiryu is virtually superhuman, the kind of individual that many of us as kids would have aspired to be like, and this makes Kiryu appear larger than life, more akin to a figure spoken about in myths and fairy tales than one grounded in a gritty crime drama. I believe this juxtaposition is what makes Kazuma Kiryu so memorable. He is fundamentally a bit of an absurd character, capable of superhuman feats and incredible levels of human compassion to match. Unlike an anti-hero such as Majima, Kiryu isn't all that relatable. He is absolutely unbelievable. He's the dragon of Dojima, a man spoken about like that of a great fable hero. This is what makes Kiryu so great. Now, with that being said, I can see why for some people there is a big issue here. The contrast between the violence that Kiryu displays in gameplay and even some cutscenes, such as the bullet-filled car chase from Yakuza 0, can be quite ridiculous. You could make a case that this breaks immersion, and the fact it is unclear whether Kiryu has actually killed someone is a failing in storytelling. But the Yakuza series just is a bit absurd, is it not? There has always been a clear distinction between the series' absurd side content and fairly serious story, well, for the most part. I think we, as players, are meant to recognise that cutscene Kiryu isn't literally bashing fugs around with motorbikes or burning them with cigars. This is there just purely for gameplay reasons. I can accept that. If an average Yakuza story could be described as a gritty, macho crime drama with soap opera-esque twists. Then the Yakuza sub-story would be more suitably described as a slice-of-life experience 
with absurdity, hilarity, and tragedy all being common themes. Whilst the sub-stories in Yakuza are often acclaimed for how funny and absurd they can be, there is also some great character development found in them, especially for the man most commonly swept up into these stories, Kazuma Kiryu. I mentioned earlier how Kiryu is kind of an absurd character. Well, somewhat ironically, Kiryu in sub-stories is very much the straight man, contrasted with the gyrating Mr. Libido, endearing pocket circuit fighter, and all the other interesting individuals that Kamurocho so reluctantly houses. Naturally, this leads to many moments of hilarity and subsequent memes. For example, I love this contrast, whereas in the previous section of this video, I spoke about how Kiryu is essentially a mythical hero, inserted into a crime drama. In the case of sub-stories, Kazuma is portrayed, for the most part, as the normal guy amongst a world of, to put it plainly, weirdos. Lovable weirdos, but weirdos nonetheless. This role reversal is incredibly effective. In many ways, Kiryu's kindness is reinforced as no matter how odd the situation or person may be, he is never unwilling to lend a helping hand. Not only a helping hand for that matter, but also some great moral advice. Let's take a look at one of my favourite sub-stories that really exemplifies the point I am making. In Yakuza 0, Kiryu encounters a young woman who is struggling with a new job. I'm sure we can all relate. How to Train Your Dominatrix is a hilarious sub-story, with some of the most awkward moments in the series. The premise is so fantastically ridiculous. Training a young dominatrix to be better at her job, by simulating the role of a client, might seem like just a play for laughs. However, there is definitely more here than you might initially think. It is also a story that shows how much Kiryu's kindness can impact upon others. Kiryu puts himself out there, to the extreme, to ultimately help someone who is suffering from a crisis in confidence. By the end of the story, he has genuinely help someone's life. I think I chose one of the more absurd examples to really stress how effective these sub-stories are in presenting Kiryu as a person who always puts others first. He tends to take people at face value, which can cost him sometimes, and he is so non-judgmental. This is just one of hundreds of stories where Kiryu positively impacted someone's life, most of the time with a guaranteed serving of humour as well. Paragon of goodness and virtue? I think so. When taking a look at why Kiryu is such a fantastic character, I believe it is essential that we examine some of the key relationships that have been developed between Kiryu and some of the other major characters in the Yakuza series. As we will discuss, many of Kiryu's relationships succeed in focusing on certain aspects of his character. Be aware, there will be some light spoilers in this section. There are so many meaningful relationships that Kiryu has developed throughout the Yakuza series, but in the interest of time, I will focus on a few that I think best represent elements of his character. We will begin by taking a look at the complicated relationship between Kiryu and my beloved Majima. In many ways, Goro Majima is presented as the perfect foil to Kiryu, the chaotic side of the same coin. Initially, Majima was Kiryu's greatest, somewhat friendly, occasionally extremely hostile rival. Throughout Yakuza 1 slash Kiwami, Majima is everywhere, trying to fight Kiryu so that the latter can become stronger. This dynamic, whilst on the surface mostly kind of silly, also does a great job of presenting a quite compelling, complex relationship. Majima cares about Kiryu, often articulated in an obsessive way, befitting of the Mad Dog. And, as the game goes on, you start to get the sense that there is a great deal of mutual respect between the characters. This is key. Whilst the characters are in many ways rivals, and even battling more often than not, Kiryu doesn't yet still hold anger or hatred towards Majima, but rather respect. This is an element of his character that pops up throughout the series. Kiryu holds very little room in his heart for hate or malice, and even though he might engage in fisticuffs with you, that doesn't mean there is a lack of respect. Take a look at the dynamic between Kiryu and Ryuji Goda 
As an example, whilst throughout Kiwami 2 they are each other's enemies, there still remains an underlying respect towards Ryuji. Because the likes of Ryuji and Majima are direct, they take matters into their own hands and Kiryu respects this, even if he doesn't necessarily agree with their methods. These dynamics reflect a very simple trait of Kiryu's character. He takes people at face value and admires those who can stand up for what they believe in, even if it materialises in the form of punching him in the face. In simple colloquial terms, Kiryu respects real. But as we all know, Kiryu is more than just a macho, finely chiselled badass with incredible suit removal ability. Kiryu is also someone who cares deeply about others and is always looking out for those less fortunate. After all, Kiryu himself had a very tough upbringing, losing both his parents at a young age and growing up at an orphanage. Kiryu is someone who has been to rock bottom, turned around and gone, nah, you're alright mate. In many ways, this never say die attitude is what puts in motion a number of the series events. But what would happen when he comes up against someone else just like this? And how does this develop his character, his legend? Enter my personal favourite antagonist in the series, Daizaku Kuze. The three lieutenants, the metaphorical Hydra that the young dragon would have to face in Zero, exemplify Kiryu's never-say-die attitude. In particular, the persistent, dangerous primary foil for Kiryu, Kuze. Throughout Yakuza Zero, Kuze presents a consistent threat to Kiryu, pushing him to his absolute physical and mental limit, and ultimately helping demonstrate Kiryu's never-say-die attitude. I mentioned earlier how Majima is one side of the same coin to Kiryu, and in a number of ways, as much as Kiryu would initially hate to admit it, there are a lot of parallels between himself and Kuze. Like Kiryu, Kuze is fairly straightforward, tough, and led by a certain code of honour. His resilience and determination throughout Zero in trying to take down the young dragon of Dojima mirrors Kiryu's perseverance in every Yakuza game thereafter. Like Kiryu, you cannot simply put him down. Kuze, a former boxer, often talks about toughing it out and that it is not always about who wins the initial fight, but rather about the one who can keep getting back up. Much like Kiryu, in the face of all sorts of adversity throughout the Yakuza series. Interestingly, much like with Majima, Kuze begins to develop a certain respect towards Kiryu, so much so that by the end of the game, he even helps him. Okay, let's move away from the many macho men that Kiryu bonds with for now, that sounds a bit too much like a great sub-story, and instead take a look at the softer side of Kiryu. When Kiryu isn't dealing with a Tojo clan coup, he actually really quite enjoys the simple things in life. These moments, away from the action, are rare for our hero, but again, allow us players to see a different side to his character. Take a look at Yakuza 3, which shows Kiryu living a more peaceful life in the awkwardly named Morning Glory Orphanage. Here Kiryu acts as a father figure to the orphan children. Of course, we already have seen instances of Kiryu as a father figure through his relationship with Haruka, but not quite as full on as we get in Yakuza 3. This part of the series is honestly one of my favourites, as it does a great job of demonstrating Kiryu's nature outside of the often chaotic environments he finds himself in. He is a kind-hearted man who just wants the best for his children. Whilst the gameplay often brings tedium in this section, the story being told is just delightful. We get to see, for at least a brief moment, a glimpse of what Kiryu's life could have been like if not for the Yakuza. Of course, I cannot discuss the relationships that Kiryu has without mentioning probably the most important one of all, his relationship with adoptive daughter Haruka. Since the start of the series discounting the prequel in Zero, Haruka has been an integral part of Kiryu's life. Haruka's inclusion in Kiryu's life reminds the player that he is not only fighting for his ideals alone, but also for her. Much like Kiryu, Haruka's upbringing is complicated and certainly not lacking in adversity. She is not only a daughter to Kiryu, but also the last connection he has to his one true love, Yumi. Haruka as a character does a great job of grounding Kiryu, acting as the perfect counterweight to the Yakuza life. She gives Kiryu a real, clear purpose. Even when their relationship isn't perfect, we can still see how much Kiryu tries to selflessly help her. The beginning of Yakuza 5 being a great example of this, 
as Kiryu creates a new life away from her, all because he doesn't want to taint her new career as an idol. I could honestly speak about all the intricacies and nuances found in Kiryu's relationships forever. He really is a great character, and this is shown clearly by how many meaningful, unique relationships he has developed throughout the series. Is Kiryu a particularly complex protagonist, layered in multiple levels of nuance? No, not particularly. Is Kiryu a badass hero that lives up to his legendary title? Yes, absolutely. Thank you all for tuning in to this week's deep dive into Yakuza series protagonist Kiryu Kazuma. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is super appreciated. For more gaming critiques, discussions and investigations, maybe consider subscribing. Next up, we take a look at Yakuza Like a Dragon. Let's continue the conversation in the comments below, where you can tell me your thoughts on Kiryu as a character. Once again, I have been Michael JH, and at times, wishing I could be half the badass that Kiryu is. Peace.